braking oil? Man, Keith, that's a question, right? It is. And it's also a variable. Huge, huge variable. You know, because the chemistry of braking oils actually varies quite a bit. So just because the label says it's a braking oil, doesn't mean that the chemistry in all those different bottles, all those different brands is the same. Agreed. I may be speaking out of turn here, but where is that, that rule, that law that says this is what qualifies as a brake and oil? Uh, there's not. I, I didn't think so. So I can pretty much slap that term brake and oil on anything, anything. Right. right. What do you got in there? I don't know. An ester synthetic for a turbine engine. Brake and oil. Right. Whatever you want to call it is yours because there isn't a ASTM or SAE standard for what defines a braking oil. This is a challenge that I deal with every day. As we've discussed in the past, the break-in procedure is the final machining operation. Absolutely. This is so important that that ring, that cylinder, have that right amount of friction mm -hmm. and the right amount of anti-scuff characteristics. Hey, I learned that from the master to protect those parts, but let them mate up. Yes, they have to mate together. It's not like a ring and pinion you bought right off the lot that's already been polished and put together. This is a cylinder that was honed over here, a piston ring that was hopefully made here in Arizona by us, yep. right? They have to go together and then mate together. And the whole idea of braking oil is to have the right chemistry that allows them to mate together without scuffing, without damage, without excessive wear, but in a very controlled fashion, a short amount of time. So you get the running in, the break in done quickly without any drama, and then you can move on. But that's not everyone's idea of breaking oil, unfortunately. No, I I've, I've see it and I deal with it on a daily basis. I, you just, you run into it all right. the time. Well, and the reason for this is that some of the chemistries that happen to be really good for breaking in a flat tappet camshaft, for example, can contain things like molybdenum, you know, molly. The downside of that is while it's great for the camshaft, your piston rings won't love it. Emphasis on the word piston because they get a little pissed. Yeah, no doubt about it. In a previous video, we went through all of this in great detail. We're not gonna rehash it all right here, right now. We'll actually leave a couple of links in the description box below. One on the breaking oil chemistry video that says, okay, what does that chemistry look like that makes it a break-in oil? We'll also leave a link for the video on the proper break-in process, both with a dyno and without a dyno. So there'll be three links, description box below. They're really great videos, if we're not so biased ourselves. <laughs> well, you know, maybe slightly slanted, but again, folks, you have to understand how important this process is. It is the final piece of the puzzle. And through the simple use of a product that isn't really a braking oil, can spoil the entire program. You can be sitting there going, I just don't know what I did wrong. Well, you probably didn't do anything wrong. It's all about the right chemistry. Yeah, you gotta have the right oil, right place, right time, right amount. What makes it the right oil is the right chemistry and the viscosity for the application. Break in, running in, depending upon what continent you're on and what kind of terminology yep. you yep. use, that's the way it has to be. Now, one of the frequent comments in our previous videos on this is, hey, you guys never recommended a brand. And we, we don't recommend a single brand of product because it's not about the brand, it's about the chemistry. Now we will say there are three brands that we have tested either here internally in our own engines mm -hmm. or we have feedback from customers that have used it in their engines and solved the problem. Those three brands happen to be ZMAX, which is sponsoring the Total Seal Pro Stock car. So that's how they kind of came to be with understanding this right chemistry because by working with us, on the ProStock program, we said, hey, this is the kind of chemistry you have to have in a braking oil. And they listened, they responded, we've tested that product, and we've seen that the ZMAX yep. product equals the same performance as the driven product and the Motul. So Motul has a 10W40 braking yep. oil, Driven has a wide range of braking oils. They, they have the most viscosity options to choose from, but what we've seen is what's common about them obviously isn't the brand, it's the fact it's the that they have 
low levels of detergent, higher levels of ZDP, zinc, and no molybdenum, no friction modifiers. We want friction. Yes. But we want protection. And getting that chemistry, again, I'm just, you know, I'm the guy just repeating what he's saying, but I deal with these phone calls every day, the good ones and the bad ones. And after a while, you kind of get a little, you know, you start checking that box going, he was successful. He was successful. He was successful. He wasn't. And you kind of get a little common thread going on. Well, he used that brand. He used that brand. That one, oh, that guy used that brand. That one was a problem. And you kind of start to look at that. You look at that chemistry and you see that consistency, that repeat performance. They're mm -hmm. all kind of doing it the same way. Little changes, little subtle things, but essentially the same basic package. If you think back, this is not new. This goes all the way back to the early 2000s when Joe Gibbs Racing began using total seal piston rings yep. and we were formulating our own oil back then. Guess what? The combination of the modern steel rings with PVD coatings, low detergent, no friction modifier, high ZDP, that recipe, that formula for success has been winning races and winning championships since the early 2000s. It's not something new, right? And like we said, it's not about the brand. It's about the chemistry. And fortunately for you as a consumer, you have options now. You have the driven product. You've got Motul and now you got ZMAX that provide that right chemistry for proper break-in. Again, it's so important. You wanna make sure you pick the proper break-in oil. This makes all the difference. And just so you know, adding a bottle of ZDP oh. to an off-the-shelf oil does not make it a break-in oil. It can't remove the molly or other things already in the oil that mess up that delicate additive balance that makes the difference on break-in. Yep, some people may say I'm being a wise guy when I say this, but I'll get customers on the phone that decide that they have a degree in chemistry mm -hmm. and they don't. <laughs> well, I've always said it, when you take a bottle of additive and you pour it in your oil, you are playing chemical Russian roulette. Sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't. I'd rather not take that risk on my engine. Yep. Let the experts be the chemists. Let them do the work, buy the bottle, put it in, run it, be happy. You don't need to modify a proper braking oil. Absolutely. You use it, no additive necessary, put it in, run it in. Follow those procedures we list in that video description below. That way you get the right oil, right place, right time, right amount so you get the right ring seal and break in.